Okay, welcome to part two of the tutorial. So at this point, you should have your back panel and front panels complete. And if not, head over to part one to do that. And we're gonna be sewing them together now. So you can see that this is my row one and the row one facing you is the right side of your cardigan or the correct side. And you wanna lay your back panel out in front of you with the right side facing up. And then you're going to take your front panels and you're going to find the right side of those as well. So the row one facing you is the right side. So you just check your stitches and you can see that row one is the correct way facing me here. And that's the right side. And you want to lay the right sides or the correct sides of the front panels face down. So you have the right side of the back panel face up. And then you have the right sides of the front panels facing down. And this is so our seam is going to be on the inside of our cardigan. Um, so technically, while we're sewing, to, sewing it together, it's inside out. So just make sure you have um, the panels facing the correct way. You can see again that this is the right side of my front panel. So we're going to lay that one down as well. And you can just do one at a time if you want. I'm just showing you here how it should look. And we're going to be sewing at the shoulders. So those tails of yarns that we saved um, are what we're going to be using to seam along just the final row of our cardigan through both the front and back panel. So you can start off with whichever side that you want and just make sure that they are facing the correct way. And then you want to line up your panels so that the stitches are even. If you want to use a stitch marker, you can do that. But all you'll want to do is make sure you aren't skipping any stitches. So I'll show you how to do that. And to begin, you want to insert your hook into the top of the chain four and the first stitch of the front panel. So make sure you're not skipping that chain four whenever you're sewing these together because that counts as a stitch. And then you're just going to yarn over and pull through. So stitch one matches up with stitch one, stitch two with stitch two, stitch three with stitch three, and you're just slip stitching across. So just insert your hook into both panels of front and back, yarn over and pull through. And you can also use a yarn needle if you prefer that and you can mattress stitch across or whichever you prefer. I just like to do it with my hook. So you're just going to do this all the way across working through both panels and you will be doing it until you run out of stitches on your front panel. So that there will be leftover stitches on the back panel that are unworked. That's our neckline. And then the other side is where you'll be sewing your second front panel. So you can see it's creating the seam here and that's the outside. This is the inside of our cardigan. So just do this all the way across until you reach the final stitch of your front panel. So you can see here I'm coming up on the final stitches of my front panel. Thought I would show you guys how to tie off. You wanna make sure that again that you're not skipping any of the starting chain so you want to make sure that you get through the starting chains on all of your panels when you're sewing because those count as a stitch so you can see here it's lined up nicely everything is even no puckering and then just yarn over and pull through and you can just pull through the entire tail I had plenty of yarn left over and that is our first front panel sewn onto the back panel. And then you can see the seam here that it's created and they're lined up nicely. And then we're just gonna repeat the same exact process with our second front panel. So again, you're just gonna take your second front panel and lay it right side facing down. And when you do that, you can see that it's flipped obviously because we have two panels so now this time we're going to be working from the center across the other direction because our tails are flipped on opposite sides because we want both of them facing right side down so you're going to have to make sure that you count your correct um, 
stitches from the front panel and work it across. Okay, so you wanna make sure that everything is lined up so that turning chain on the end, make sure your shells are all lined up correctly. That's the easiest way to make sure. So you want each shell to be lined up with the correct shell. And if you wanted to and you didn't save your tail, um, you can also slip stitch to join with a fresh piece of yarn on either side. It doesn't matter, but because my tail is on this side, that's where I'm going to be starting off. So make sure you're inserting it in the very corner and then make sure the stitch count is lined up correctly with the back panel as well. And then you're just going to um, slip stitch to join and then the same as before, work your way across. I was doing it backwards. So let me show you again. Just like that. So hopefully that makes sense that your shells should be lined up and your stitch count should be the same so that you're working the stitches evenly across. You want to make sure that you're not accidentally having too many, that your front panel is too far over and that you're putting it in the wrong back panel stitch. So just make sure everything is lined up correctly. Count your stitches over to the center on the back panel and then slip stitch all the way across until you reach the edge. You can see here that both sides are slip stitched and our shoulders are joined. And we're going to be doing the same process with the sides of our sweater. So we're gonna be working from the bottom of our sweater up and then leaving the armhole unworked So go ahead and take your measuring tape and you can measure from the shoulder seam down. So depending on your size, your, your arm opening will be different. So you'll want to measure out a different length for each one. But I'm making the size extra small, small. And so I'm going to be measuring out a total of 8 inches for mine. So you can go ahead and follow along with the written pattern. Make sure you have the right length that you need to measure out. And then using a stitch marker, you can just place it right at the eight inch mark. Um, and you'll know not to work your slip stitches past this point. So again, the next size up, you'll leave 8.75 inches. The size after that, 9.5. Just make sure you're checking depending on what size you're making and then just place your stitch marker. And then we'll be working from the bottom up with our slip stitching. And again, if you prefer using a yarn needle and doing like a mattress stitch or something like that, you can do that as well. But to join our yarn, just go ahead and make a slip knot. And then you're going to take your hook and you're going to in insert it in the very bottom corner of both the front and the back panel. So at the very bottom of the of row one, you're going to insert your hook and make sure you're skipping those foundation chains from row one of that panel and you're going to insert it into the chain. And then you're just going to slip stitch it to join. So yarn over and pull through both the front and the back panel and the loop on your hook. And we're just going to slip stitch all the way up the side until we reach our stitch marker. And you can see here that there's big chain spaces. Instead of inserting your hook into the chain space like that, you're going to put it through the actual chain of your stitch. And you don't have to do it through every single chain if you find that you don't need that many. You can just really insert your hook wherever you are most comfortable. But when joining the panels here, I recommend putting it through um, the actual chain or the actual stitch of the treble crochet. And you're just going to do this all the way up the side. And you'll also want to make sure that your rows are lined up correctly. So when you're joining, make sure row one is joining with row one, row two with row two, row three with row three. You can easily tell which row you're on but just by looking at both the front and back panel and make sure the shells from row one are lined up with the shells from row one of the other panel. So basically just make sure everything's lined up and that you are not um, 
puckering the rows or you have it uneven, you don't want to be putting your hook into the stitch from row one and have it be joining with row two. You just want to make sure that everything is nice and even and clean looking. So just do this all the way up the side until you reach the stitch marker. And then you're also going to need to repeat this on the opposite side. You'll be doing the exact same thing. So just slip stitch all the way up. Make sure you're not pulling too tightly or too loosely. Try and have an even tension throughout. Okay, so at this point you should have both sides of the sweater seamed up. And before you move on, just make sure that your rows are lined up evenly. You can see all my rows are lined up evenly. There's no puckering or anything like that in the sweater. And here is our armhole. Um, if you wanted yours to be bigger, you can pull out some of your um, slip stitches if you want a looser armhole. Or if you want it to be tighter, you can add a few more slip stitches. I've already tied off my yarn here, so when I show you guys how to do the trim on the sleeve, I'll be joining a new piece. But if you haven't tied off, that's perfectly fine. You, you can just continue on um, with your working yarn. But to begin, you're going to turn your sweater right side out. So your sweater is going to be correct side out now, and our seam is on the inside of the sweater. And now we'll be working in the round to create the trim of the sleeve. So go ahead and grab your yarn and your hook. And we're going to start off with a slip knot. And we'll be joining our yarn to the bottom seam of the armhole. So the seam that is right there at the armpit will be joining right to the left of it. So create a slip knot. Insert your hook and pull tight to secure. And then you just want to find a spot to insert your hook. It's not super important where you're inserting it. I like to put mine right to the very left of the seam and then just slip stitch to join. And now we'll be working our stitches in the round. So chain one and then in that same spot work a single crochet. So now that we're working single crochet stitches, you can work into the actual chain spaces instead of into the actual chains. So the big old gaps or the chain spaces that you see here from where our treble crochet rows are, I'm just going to be working my stitches directly into it. And I found as I was working the sleeve trim that I needed about three single crochet per every um, treble crochet row. So you can kind of see where I am placing them. I placed about two into the chain space and then my third one into the uh, stitch where the two rows joined if that makes sense. And if you want you can put your stitches into the actual stitch but I find it to look a lot cleaner when you're just working around the whole stitch. So you can see that I just worked around the entire post of that stitch and I'm working around the entire um, chain as well here. So I'm doing about two in every single row and then that third one right in between the rows. So it comes out to about three single crochet for every row around. But it's not super important what your stitch count is or how many stitches you are doing you just want to make sure that you keep it even. So in the written pattern, I don't have a stitch count here. It just says to try and even it out as um, clean as you can. So again, I've done about three for every row and it came out um, pretty clean. You can see if it starts to wave, that means you have too many stitches. And if it's pulling and puckering your sleeve, then you don't have enough stitches. So just work your single crochet stitches all the way around the arm opening. And again, I'm just doing it directly around the stitches and I think it comes out looking a lot neater and cleaner that way. So just continue all the way around until you reach back to the first single crochet. Okay, so now I have completed round one of the sleeve opening. 
and you can see that I've tried to make it pretty even as even as possible and now I'm back down to the seam and in that first single crochet that you made just insert your hook and slip stitch to join and now it'll be easy from here on out you're going to chain one and instead of working through the entire single crochet we're going to be working through the back loop only so instead of putting your hook under both loops like that you're going to put your hook only in the loop that is furthest away from you and then work a single crochet stitch again put it in the loop that's furthest away and work a single crochet and you're just going to do this all the way around so in every single single crochet stitch that you have work one single crochet in the back loop only all the way around the arm opening and then i will show you guys what to do once you reach back around to your first stitch Okay, so now I'm coming up to the first single crochet made and I'm just going to be inserting my hook into the top of that single crochet, yarn over and pull through, chain one, and then you're just gonna repeat the same exact thing that you did in the previous round, which is working one single crochet and the back loop only all the way around the opening of the arm. You can see it leaves a nice little line detail so just do this all the way around and when you reach back to the beginning again just slip stitch to join to the top of the single crochet so insert your hook and then yarn over and pull through and now you can tie off let's so go ahead and cut your yarn and pull it all the way through and then you're going to repeat the same exact thing on the second sleeve opening so you'll want to go ahead and count the stitches that you made on that first armhole opening and try and get it to um, as close as possible as the same amount on the other. I think I had about 50 single crochet if I'm remembering correctly on both my sleeve openings. And now we're going to be doing that same exact thing to the entire length and opening of our um, cardigan. So we'll be working up the front panel along the back neckline down the second front panel and then all the way across the bottom of the front panel the back panel and the second back panel we'll be doing our single crochet stitches so i'll show you guys how to do that right now Okay, so again with your cardigan right side out, we're going to be joining our yarn at the bottom corner of the front left panel. And if you're wearing it, it's considered the front right panel, so it just depends on how you're looking at it. So in that starting chain right there at the beginning of row one, you're going to insert your hook into the bottom of that chain four. And then just yarn over and pull through and now we'll be doing the same process that we did on the sleeves so chain one work a single crochet into the same space and then you're going to be working your single crochet stitches up the side of the front panel so again i'm just doing it all the way around the entirety of the um, chains and the treble crochets and I ended up doing about the same exact as the sleeve, working about three single crochet for every row of the front panel. And you can put your hook wherever you feel most comfortable or wherever you think it looks the best. Just try and make your stitches even. Again, the stitch count does not matter here, so you don't need to worry about reaching um, an exact number of stitches just try and keep it to about three stitches for every row of um, the panels so work your single crochet stitches evenly up that first side Okay, so now I've worked my way up the first inner side of that front panel and now I am at the um, back panel area and so 
Now that we're at the back panel, we're going to be working into the top of the actual stitches from the final row of the back panel. So instead of working it um, around the sides of the rows, we're at the top of the back panel. So this part's really simple. You can just work one single crochet into each stitch across that back panel that you have open. So work your single crochet stitches one stitch into each stitch. And then when you reach the end of that back panel area, you can just continue on. You're going to be continue working your single crochet stitches down the second front panel. So now I'm rotating my work and continuing on down the exact same as the first front panel. Try to keep it to about three single crochet for every row. And then I will show you guys what to do at the bottom corner. Okay, so now I'm at the bottom corner of the front panel, and in that very corner stitch, you need to work three single crochet all into the same spot. So there's one, two, and then three single crochet all in the same spot. And if you want, you can pull out a stitch marker here and place it into that second single crochet that you just made, or the center single crochet of that group of three. And now you can continue working your single crochet stitches along the bottom of the panels now. And for this section, again, I worked around um, the chain spaces and you can see when I reach the um, center of the shell stitches and the um, treble crochet, you can put, you can work your stitches into the bottom of those posts. So in the chain spaces, I just work around it. And then you can see here, I reach the shell spot and I put my single crochet into the um, stitch where the shell is made. And you can just continue doing this all the way across. So again, just try and make your stitches even. Don't put too many, don't put too little. You wanna just try and make it as even as possible and just work it all the way across the length of the front panel, the back panel, and the next front panel. And I'll show you guys what to do once you reach the beginning of the round. So just continue with your single crochet stitches all the way across. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end of round one, and when you reach the end, you want to make sure that you work two single crochet into the same spot as the first single crochet made, because on that first front panel corner, we worked three into the same space, so now we want three more here as well. So work two more single crochet into the same spot that the first single crochet of the round was made for a total of three in the same spot and then slip stitch to join to that first single crochet made. And that completes round one. And then you can chain one. And then now again, just like you did on the sleeves, we're gonna be working our um, single crochet stitches in the back loop only. So continue up the, the side of the front panel by working one stitch into every single crochet work across the back neckline of the back panel with one single crochet in the back loop only and down the inner side of the second front panel one single crochet in the back loop only and then I will show you guys what to do at that corner again um, where you have placed your stitch marker or the spot where we have the three single crochet all in the same spot. Okay, so now I have worked my way back down that second front panel and I've come up to the group of three single crochet at the corner. And when you reach that group of three, you're gonna work one single crochet into the first stitch. And in the center stitch of the group of three, work three more single crochet. So in that center one of the three, work three. And if you want, you can move up your stitch marker and place into the place it into the second one, second stitch made of that group of three to keep your spot. 
and then just continue as normal working one single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch until you get to the end of the round and when you reach the end of the round you need to finish off by working three single crochet into the last stitch and then slip stitch to join and again you can move your stitch marker up into that center of the three single crochet and then chain one and you're just going to repeat that same exact thing work your single crochet up the side across the back down the next panel when you reach the corner work three single crochet into the center of the three single crochet of the row below and then work across the bottom and when you reach the end work three single crochet into the center of the three single crochet at the last corner and then just go ahead and slip stitch to join and you can tie off and that completes the trim of our cardigan after completing the final round make sure you weave in all the ends and that completes the cardigan thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you back here next time